Hey there, everybody. Daryl here with a video today to highlight 10 tips that I think might help to make cooking more enjoyable for you. Before I get into my 10 tips, let me tell you what I'm drinking. Today, just coffee. All right, so without any further delay, let's get right into it. Tip number one. Take a few minutes to clear your head. Think about this. How many times have you had to prepare a meal and you found that while doing so, every darn thing imaginable annoyed you? It's probably because a lot of times when we cook, it's right after we have uh, left work and had to deal with rush hour traffic or had to deal with public transportation or had to pick up the kids from some practice or dealing with your spouse. Or in my case, you got the dog sitting over there staring at you. Take a few minutes to clear your head. In the grand scheme of things, what's an extra five minutes before they get to eat, right? I think if you if you take that time, do a little meditation, do a little zen, whatever it is that you do to uh, clear your head, I think you'll be in a better mood cooking, okay? All right, so that is tip number one. Tip number two, try and always start with a clean and orderly kitchen. That means making sure all of the dishes are washed, anything on your counter that is potentially cluttered, clear it off, okay? In addition to that, I like to have an extra bowl or a, an extra grocery bag on hand to put any type of scraps or kitchen trash in. I don't like constantly touching the trash when I'm cooking. So I try to have these two on hand so that I can put things like onion skins or eggshells or wrappers in here and then throw them away later so that I'm not constantly touching the garbage can. In addition to that, think about making some dish water so that you have fresh water on hand if you need to wipe anything down or sometimes you just need to dip your hands in there for a moment, okay? So tip number two, try and always start with a clean and orderly kitchen. Tip number three, this is one of my favorites. And this is something I have practiced since 1991. And that is to create a mood of your own. If you haven't figured out yet what type of mood encourage you to want to cook and enjoy doing it, that's your homework. Before you cook another meal or before you go and you start binge watching my videos, which I hope you will do, take a little time to figure out what it is that make you enjoy cooking. For me, I like to have a cocktail, and I like to have music. If you're a long time subscriber, you know already, if I'm cooking, I'm drinking. I also, as I said, like to have music. I like it so much that I install a whole house sound system so that my music can follow me in every room, especially in the kitchen. In addition to that, you gotta know um, if, for example, you like cooking alone. I do. If you like people around, you gotta understand why you like them around. Do you just want someone to talk to? Do you like to have someone to cook with you? Do you just want to hand off tasks? Whatever it is that makes you or helps you to enjoy cooking, you have to figure that out. And that'll help you to not have uh, a source of frustration when you have to prepare a meal, okay? That is my tip number three. Tip number four, create your own cookbook. When I ask if you have a cookbook, I'm not talking about something that you bought from the store. When I ask if you have your own book, that is a book that you assemble. The sources for these recipes can vary. It can be recipes handed down from your grandparents or your parents or uh, something that your neighbors share with you, but it is a book that you put together with recipes suited to your liking. In my book, anyone who cooks for a family should have their own cookbook, okay? In addition to having your own cookbook, you should always wear an apron. I've got a video on that. If you haven't seen it, go and find it and take a look at it. But I think everyone who cooks should have an apron on or some other cooking gear every single time that they cook. Okay, that is my tip number four. Tip number five, don't hesitate to splurge on yourself in the kitchen. Whether it's a nice set of cookware, whether it's gadgets, whether it's a nice cutting board, whether it's sharp knives, whether it's a mixer, or if you need something like a food processor or blender, think about how much time you spend in the kitchen. 
With all of that time you spend in there, you should have things that are useful, that are practical, help make your job in the kitchen easier, and things that you enjoy using, okay? So, don't skimp. If you wanted a nice set of golf clubs, you'd find a way to make it happen, right? What about a nice set of luggage, right? What about something for your car? Similarly, in the kitchen, if there's something that is practical and useful and will help you enjoy um, your time in the kitchen, treat yourself. That is tip number five. Tip number six, consider putting food in leftover containers, especially when you know you've made extra, before you actually make your plates, okay? There's nothing wrong with putting extra food in one of these containers and building your plates from it, okay? In addition to that, if you know you have extra and you're gonna make some for lunch the next day, or maybe you wanna make some and freeze them for uh, lunch or dinner meals later, do all of that before you serve the meal. If you're like me and like most people I know, once you've eaten, you do not want to go back and deal with putting food away or cleaning the kitchen. Speaking of cleaning, of the, cleaning the kitchen, consider cleaning as you go. If you clean your kitchen as you go, which, which includes washing dishes as you go, there won't be anything left for you to do after you've had your meal except for the deal with whatever plates and silverware you had for the meal. Okay, so that is my tip number six. Plan ahead so that you don't have much to do after you're done eating. Tip number seven. Listen carefully. I'm gonna lean in close because I want you to hear me. Don't hesitate sharing your creations on social media. When you're out at the restaurant, you don't hesitate showcasing what the chef at the restaurant did, right? So why not showcase what you did? Go ahead and put it on all of your social media accounts. Showcase what you did. And while you're doing that, keep in mind presentation. If you're not already practicing good presentation skills, take a look at some of my other YouTube videos or go and take a look at the Facebook group that has the exact same name as this YouTube channel and you'll see plenty of ideas on how you might uh, incorporate presentation into your meal. But what I'm strongly recommending to you with tip number seven is to go ahead and showcase your meals on social media, okay? Tip number seven. All right, tip number eight. Try and learn a new trick or skill, let's say once a month. For example, how many of you can crack an egg with one hand? Or how many of you can saute your food in the skillet, shake it without it flying out? If you can't do that, practice that. If not these two, find something else to do, okay? But try and learn a new skill, let's say once a month. That's tip number eight. Tip number nine, experiment with ingredients that you've never used before. For example, if you've got a map on your wall and a dart, throw the dart at the map. Wherever it lands, find some foods or some spices from that area and try and make experiment with those things and see how you like it. If you don't have a map, find some other way to narrow it down. But find, um, again, some, some spices or some foods from an area or a culture that you've not experienced, experienced before and experiment with it, okay? That's tip number nine. Tip number 10, keep it simple. I knew I threw a lot at you. But, and I also know that there are several dishes that you put together that may be somewhat complicated. Keep it simple. Think about doing it, doing on them in stages. If you want an example of complicated dishes, take a look at the video I posted of the Mexican chicken and waffle dish or the Nashville hot chicken. Those are complicated dishes that I did in stages. I do it that way, you can too. Now, keep in mind what I said earlier about presentation. Always. Think about your presentation and know that presentation does not equal perfection. There's no such thing as perfection when you're cooking. And then also remember that your kitchen and cooking is often messy, but it's never nasty. Keep a clean environment and know that it's going to get messy because if you're cooking, things are going to boil over. You're going to drop stuff. Stuff is going to spill. Okay. That's the messy part about uh, cooking. So as I close out, let me just say, if you haven't already subscribed, you ready? Because I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it, help a brother out. If you're already a subscriber, you get another one. You know I love you, all right? So, 
hit the subscribe button, tell a friend or two, and I will talk to you all again on the next video.